Okay. On the left-hand side, we see an online list of the Second Life 20th Birthday Exhibitor Showcase. There are some 320 exhibits going all the way down like this. On the right-hand side, we see exhibits that we visited in the past two days. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Evolving Spaces. Episode 7, Chapter Aware, Continue. In this episode, we re-entered by reflecting that we're continuing to learn more about and gain familiarity with YouTube streaming, more on that in a second, and in looking through a subset of those 320 exhibits, uh, it re forced us to realize how communities of shared interests operate in Second Life in the virtual world and, of course, in the real world. In particular, Dunbar's number says there's only 150 so significant contacts we all can maintain, but to have a strong set of interaction, and that usually brings it down to 50, but if there are people you've heard of that are in the same area of general interest, it could be 500. But the ones that you kind of know and interact with frequently are about 150. So we toured a bunch of exhibits. We're going to show you just a few of them. In fact, we toured, we toured 37 exhibits total, 18 in the first chapter and 19 in the second chapter. We looked for exhibits that had the keyword dance, 3D, music, virtual in the title or description, and a couple of them we just viewed happenstance. We also um, took the YouTube live recordings and have begun parsing them and deliberately stop started our stream to kind of break the tour up into sections. We noticed things about exhibits that kept our attention or lost our attention. Or, or, you know, they all had our attention because they had the right keyword. So one distinction we're toying with is a 3D slideshow versus a 3D walkthrough. And seeing your avatar walkthrough versus free camming, free cameraing around an exhibit. The, the overall question is when is 3D really the right choice? And that's our question. When is 3D a really good choice? Now, we don't have the answer for that, but we did take a bunch of notes. So we took a lot of notes about what was keeping our interest. So let's, let's jump into a few of those. Let's go ahead and run through this list of 37. This first one is called My Surreal World. We're going to teleport there. No offense to the artists. Our, it's going to either be catches our interest or meh. So this one was meh. Uh, we're looking for truth beyond visuals. This is very strong on visuals, all kinds of custom 3D mesh objects. But it's kind of a drab color. And it's just uh, low energy. So that was kind of a meh. Uh, let's go to this one. Designing worlds. We're going live, guys. These are live. So in this one, this one really caught our interest because of this pavilion over here. We love this pavilion. Let's wait a few minutes for it to settle in. Here come the colors. We'll even sit down for a minute. First thing that caught our attention was this snail. It'll, it'll sharpen up in a minute. Second thing that caught our attention was this jade green uh, wall decor. And then we started noticing a lot of green and a lot of what we would call Chinese influence. See there, the, the jade is just kicking in. And then it is a pretty elegant room if you look at it. And so designing worlds, they, they go to different places all over Second Life. Still kind of waiting for this shell. 
this is a mesh object and we like it. You see it's been custom shaped to look like a whatever you call that whole lamp there. That, now it's kind of kicked in. And then they've also got a little a cool tiger over here. Uh, but its stripes haven't shown up yet. But we like this room a lot. And it's so and it's also got a, a little fountainy sound. So the things that caught our attention here were very elegance, objects de art, as the French would call them, which is the snail and the jade. And then after it caught our attention, we became hooked on seeing what else was here. So we like this one a lot. So what else uh, have we got that we could show briefly? Um, there's something called Ayuda. This one is a uh, gateway for the Spanish-speaking members of Second Life. And we caught, we saw this one from far away, but then it turned out to be on our list. Because if you, this is like a three-story exhibit, but if you go up here, notice that we're not walking our avatar around. What caught our interest was these little bitty cities. We love miniature cities. We love them. We've made them. Um, here's a little church. Here's a little square. And, I mean, you can, you can fly your camera through it, and they're empty. They don't do anything. They just look like cute little cities. But the second thing that caught our attention was trying to figure out what all these flags were. It turns out that's Puerto Rico. And then we had to look it up on, on Wikipedia, to be honest. Um, the difference between Colombia and Ecuador is tough. Uh, can we find that? This is Colombia. It's a green and a blue and a red. And then Ecuador has an eagle on top of it. And then over here, Mexico has the three colors plus an eagle. I mean, we didn't know any of this. If you'd asked us to describe these flags, we wouldn't even be able to tell you now. But it really caught our attention to say, wait, they're demonstrating all these different countries. There's Uruguay and Argentina and Venezuela. And I don't remember which one these are. And that we just love that. We love those little cities. So that really caught our attention. So we like that one. What else? What else? Um, all right, this one is very, very silly. It's about as simplistic as you can get. And it, it caught our attention because it's silly. It, it claimed to be silly. And all it is, it's a it's a prim here, and if you click it, it'll take you to play a YouTube video, and it's a parody of a of a musician. And there's a lot of musicians for real in Second Life, and this guy, I think, I don't know where you click it. We're kind of having to wait for things to kick in. These are all on our uh, YouTube live recording, Mandroid. It's what called is Mandroid. that second live metaverse? It's the 20th yeah, birthday That's of what second I mean by life silly. metaverse. I don't the really, fantastic future of second that life. It's this a one. fantastic future for everyone. Made Android metaverse, Android metaverse, Android metaverse. Well, it did have music. Android and in order to play music that continuously, Fantastic Future, Android Metaverse, they're on Android a stream. Metaverse, well, they're using YouTube as a stream. Android Metaverse, Android Metaverse. No, we're gonna we're gonna skip that. Fantastic Future. Uh, this is a uh, dance animator guy, and they gave they give dances away. So this is kind of cool. Let's just go over here. And we've loved dances from the first year we ever spent in Second Life. So then you click it, it gives you a free copy of that dance, and you can take it around with you and take it at all the clubs and go go dance it. And there's one, there's like one, two, three, there's four, five, six dances. So we'd like to go to this guy's store and uh, maybe buy a few of those. So that was the, the dance part. In fact, we had uh, Virginia Stella and I looked at all the dance places together because um, he runs a dance troupe in Second Life. And I, I filmed her work. 
this, there's a couple radio stations in Second Life. They they do podcasts and things and broadcast on stream, obviously. The thing we noticed in common about uh, the radio stations, they all have, uh, well, featured celebrities, you know, shows, scheduled shows. So there's like a tarot reading show and a celebrity interviewing show, and I don't know what all the shows are. So the exhibit naturally had a couple setup areas that you can't see right now. But again, these are uh, the full res versions are on our recorded live streams. So they featured all that. And then in order to kind of give you something interesting to do, uh, they came up with like lounge areas to sit in. And so what caught our interest here was just the idea of uh, what a virtual radio studio would be like. And we saw two of them, so we saw some common themes. What else? What else? What else? Um, there were a lot of scenic things. A lot of visuals. A lot of visuals. And we kind of came up with a new mantra called Truth Beyond Visuals. So... The, the mantra of our own exhibit in Second Life is truth beyond words, and we're emphasizing the music. And then you could say, well, the uh, image is beyond words. Yeah. On the other hand, Second Life has been known for images since the get-go. So doing sound in there is a little trickier. A little bit trickier. So we were really looking for, we were hoping to find... You know, other music exhibits that play music and do stuff. This one looked promising. It's called Music of the Symphony of the Future. And it, it is interesting. It wasn't quite what we thought would be interesting. At first, it just looked like an art gallery, a 2D slideshow where you walk around. And, and you might as well just use, you know, our camera like this. However, the second room, and each of these either had uh, one parcel or two parcels connected or sometimes a quad parcel. So this took one parcel and split it in half and is this the one we're thinking of? No. Well, this has visual art. So if it moves, it catches our interest more. So that's better. These static images, eh, meh. They're pretty images. Nothing wrong with that. It's just, you could look on YouTube or, or you know, just browse the web. Um, but there's another one called Art or something. Art or something. That's a great name. Maybe we can find it here. No, we want to find rows. This is it. This was literally how we went around. What caught our attention here was it also looked in, like another 2D art exhibit. Oh no, the pictures are great. They're all futuristic looking music. Oh, it looks, it's got a headphone. This will take you to Spotify. We didn't catch this before. We have to log in. No, I don't want to log in. Actually, we have an ID. I don't have a Spotify account. Too bad. So we're not going to do that. So anyway, we thought, wouldn't it be cool to do a... Uh, there, now you can see the pictures. Hmm. Well, we only did 19 of them today. Oh, it's over here. Here it is. 
This is what caught our interest visually, because this looks like a 3D moving waveform mesh, and it is. But it's much more, it catches our attention much more by walking around in it. This we like. It, we feel like we're walking through an abstract space, which we are. However, if we stay out of it and just use our camera, you know, go like this, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, it's just a static image again it, or a, a moving animation. It doesn't catch our interest. But if we can walk through it, so that we recorded. That was a kind of a key insight. So let's just piggyback off of that. So the things that we notice are some exhibits are more interactive and those catch our interest way more than just visuals. Some exhibits have sound, ditto, catch our interest, movement, and it could be movement of prim objects or movement of animations. And we ended up calling it, like we said, truth beyond the visuals. Some exhibits have miniature cities, ditto, we like that. Uh, because of our interest in miniature cities and, and city building and models. Uh, some exhibits have visual symbols like the flags. Some have emotional text content like personal reminiscences. Some have anime. Oh, we already said that part. Uh, some are the color is a lot more interesting and not blah. And some exhibits have high quality visual art. I don't know why that didn't carry over. So that ends our uh, episode for today. What we really like about today and yesterday is it's probably the most thorough we've ever picked out an exposition. Um, what we wish is that it didn't give us quite the headache. I mean, it, we feel a headache from just from our you can't see us. We decided to use our avatar today. Here, our little, our little avatar gal, because we have an avatar gal here. Um, so we liked, we liked seeing all the exhibits, and we liked getting new ideas, and we and we did end up writing reports, or, or note cards to some of them. This is this is actually the one that had the musical pictures that we liked. They weren't resing. We couldn't show them to you. Come on. Come on and res a couple of these. These would be awesome. Okay, this one does not have Spotify music. So anyway, we sent them a card saying we liked their pictures and would they be interested in doing a, a gallery animation? Uh, we found another exhibitor that had uh, music that went well past the 30-second limit, but they're using some thing they wrote that's still in development, so it's not exactly available to borrow to buy, much less borrow. Plus, we'd have to think about what we'd want to do with it, because we don't, you know, the thing about uploading art into Second Life is you could just upload it on a website. It's a, two, a 2D display is what it is, like these are. If we put music with it, which is what we do with our gallery animations on YouTube, then then you could get, you know, 50 of these in a row with about two or three minutes worth of music. But aren't those cool? Yes, we think they're cool. I mean, they're kind of Dali-esque and surreal, but, and they're colored. That first place you went to is Dali-esque, but it was all monochrome. So... Um, you know, and then you can see stuff back here. So if you're interested, all you got to do is go to a search on, you know, SL20B. And your favorite website. I think SL20B. Yeah, and boom. Uh, and if you don't have an account, never fear, it'll they're all listed featured right here because they're pushing this hard. They've got schedules of and there's we've got our gifts in the gift area and all that. 
and the exhibitor showcase, which is what we just showed you. So if you if you wanted to go to a I don't know a concert or something, you go in here and you click on it. And God, I don't I'm not going to do all that anyway. Once you get the map up in your face um, and say I want to go here, it'll open up Second Life for you. And if you don't have Second Life, it'll say Would you like to install Second Life? And that's free. And it walks you through making an account name. No credit card needed. Blah, 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 blah. So shout out to Virginia Stella for going on the dance tour with us, our silent viewers who have been looking at our recordings. Willow Esther and Paola who gave us positive feedback today. And Shuggy who stopped by and said hello on the stream. And as usual, we didn't see them until too late. Well, by too late, we mean well, after they were gone. Nevertheless, a shout out to Shugi. Tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care. Do come back. And do keep on streaming.